Uh, so I just want to go over really quickly the caucus election guide and then we'll turn it over to you all for questions. Um, so first of all, uh, you should all, you all probably are familiar with the caucus system already. They're just formed to represent groups that face discrimination in American society as a whole. And some of the goals of caucuses are, are to really um, spread awareness about the issues as well as work towards equality in the United States. Um, the caucuses that are up, the, there are a couple of official caucuses. I know that last year we had a couple of more caucuses, but we're cutting down on the official caucuses this year. So these are the ones that are up for election. Um, you can run for chair or vice chair. And I maybe someone can drop the uh, filing Google form in the chat. So yeah, the I can do that. Awesome. <laughs> so the timeline, is this updated? Yes. Okay. This is updated. Yeah. So the timeline will be by July 15th, you need to have filed for candidacy. That means uh, just having submitted the Google form. I believe on the Google form, all you have to do is like explain which caucus you're running for um, and then provide like a bio and a platform. Uh, it's really easy. And then the election pack will be released July 16th. And then there'll be a couple days for voting and then ballots will close at midnight on the 18th and then we'll release the results the next day so a couple of the election guidelines um you can all go over these but basically it's we wanted to keep it very low key because caucuses are like a safe space they are not um like a place for hierarchies or anything so you know just just no instagram accounts no endorsements um and you just have to be registered for two months for your caucus for two months before voting begins so now what do you do as the leader of an HSDA caucus? The nice thing is that it's kind of like a new position. So you have a lot of room to like play around with it, play around with the role. If there's like some events you want to host that haven't been done before, um, it's totally your prerogative to host them. And we and some other leaders on the national level will be there to help you out with whatever you need. So in this document, there are a list of examples of things that have been done, or this is a list of responsibilities, sorry, for the caucus leadership. So the biggest things that you'll have to do are plan caucus meetings, um, which should happen at least once every two weeks. And these can be private. These don't have to be open to the public. You don't have to hold like an educational thing every time. It can definitely just be a place for members to talk amongst themselves. Another big thing that is new this year is caucus leadership will be expected to submit monthly written reports on caucus activity to the executive board. This isn't like super formal or anything, um, but just like a short update on what your caucus has been up to and if you need anything from the national board, just to make sure that everyone is staying active and we're all keeping in touch. Um, outside of that, uh, Cox leadership has to like maintain membership. Um, you'll need to have at least 20 active members in the caucus at all time. And then it's the other things like, you know, creating events and running social medias, um, all of the normal day-to-day -day jobs of the Cox leaders. So, but as I said, you do have a team at nat the national level supporting you. You'll have the diversity director, which is being currently appointed by the caucus leadership. Uh, that would be your first contact as caucus leadership. So if, if something happened to the caucus or you need a resource, you would reach out to the diversity director um, who can then reach out to the executive board or the appropriate national staff member. Um, at least once a month, the chair and vice chair will speak with the diversity director, executive board, and possibly adult advisory board members um, so you can express concerns, ideas, or if you have like an event you want to help planning, um, you can approach us there. And the executive board is here for you. If you need anything, just reach out. If you need help promoting something on like your social media page, um, you'll be able to just give us a text or give us an email um, and we will get back to you on that. Another great resource is national staff. So let's say um, your caucus wants to connect with a candidate. You might email our campaigns director. If you need help with expansion, reach out to our expansion director. Uh, they, they go a lot more like specific and in-depth and can help you with specific problems where the executive board uh, might be a better resource if you're looking for something more broad. And I'm not going to go through all of this, but these are just some events that have been put on in the past by caucus leadership that were all really awesome um and they're just some ideas that you can build on in the coming year again this isn't like this isn't an exhaustive list because the caucus system just started up uh you can totally do all, all sorts of events um but if you are struggling to come up with new ideas this is a great reference point and a great place to start 
Um, executive board members, current caucus leaders, did I miss anything? I think that's pretty good, Darby. Um, now if people like have questions and want to ask anything or, you know, whatever, just, you know, either you can put it in the chat or just speak, whatever. Also, um, I will drop my email in the chat so you can email me questions afterwards if you would feel more comfortable doing that. And we really are encouraging, you know, anyone who is eligible to run. Um, obviously, don't apply if you don't think that you can handle it, but um, it's really important that these caucuses in the next year, um, you know, are spearheading projects and doing lots of things and we definitely need strong leadership for that. So if you're eligible, don't be afraid to run. What's the worst that can happen, right? So, yeah. Yeah, does anyone have any questions or I know we have some um, current caucus leaders. Yeah, so the someone just asked uh, if they can find their presentation. So we're actually recording this um, session. I think we're probably going to be uploading it to Facebook, I think. Um, and also the the caucus guide um, will be made accessible to caucus leaders and can be distributed that way for as well. Um, so yeah, if you if also if you just want to email us, we can just send it to you that way as well. Yeah. So Caleb asked, are these elections done through ranked choice voting? I actually don't know off the top of my head. Morgan, do you know? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think that we are still figuring out the specifics, but we will get back to you on that. Also, this presentation that Darby is screen sharing is actually the candidacy guide, which is, um, there's a link to it. A I can put it in the chat. Oh, oh, I think pretty good. Yeah. 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 Um, so someone asks, what type of campaigning within caucuses are allowed? Um, we're really trying to limit the campaigning just because we don't really want this hierarchy in the caucus systems. It shouldn't be too competitive. You know, texting fellow members that you've already talked to, um, don't bombard people. If you think that you're doing something that could be considered illegal, then it's probably not good. So just kind of stick to like the most moral path um, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Someone asked, can you apply for NAT staff if you're running for caucus leadership? Yes, you can. Just make sure that whatever you're applying for, assume, like, just make sure that you'll have time. Like, don't automatically assume that you're not going to get both, which is probably unlikely, but just don't assume that because you want to make sure that you have the time allotted needed. So, yeah. Yeah, and also if you're a current caucus leader or just a caucus member and you have any friends who you think would be good candidates, make sure to let them know and um, share the form with them and the guide so that they can run. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any other questions. Are there any current caucus leaders on here that want to like mention anything else they did or like strategies they used for like campaigning or anything? or just like anything in general that we may have missed so far? Um, sorry, question. Uh, can you apply for more than one caucus leadership? Um, I would say you can, but I would uh, suggest against it because I think it's, uh, it would be pretty difficult to run two, two caucuses. Um, so I think like, you know, maybe if you want to like apply for one position and be involved in another way, like maybe help out with graphics or something, you know, something like that, another caucus, that's probably fine. But I would say it's, it's definitely um, going to probably be a lot of work to, to run um, more than one caucus, I would say. Hey, how would the um, application for a NAT staff work? 
So that's also an application um, which will be followed by an interview. If you want, we can drop that in the um, chat as well. But yeah. If you have any questions about that, we can answer that now as well. Sorry, can you guys hear the lawnmower? I'm gonna turn. Okay, um, if there are no more questions, I don't see anything in the chat or anything, um, then I guess we can wrap it up, right? Good. Okay, so again, feel free to email any one of us if you have questions about caucus leadership and filing or national staff or anything else. Um, but I really encourage you all to apply uh, or to run rather. And thank you for hopping on. All right. Bye, all. Thank you all. Bye.